Hi guys, it's Liliana the Magnificent and welcome back to my secondary baby study, Bo Battens. In this video, I am going to touch on the importance of guilds within the game Forge of Empires. So, in my opinion, guilds are the most foundational, crucial, and exciting feature within the game. The guild acts as your family, as your home base. The people in the guild help you learn about the game, help you grow, help you build great buildings, help you get blueprints. You get to work together as a team um, in features like guild battlegrounds, in guild expedition, and also in guild versus guild. You get to make connections, which is my personal favorite part um, as well. So to give you a little bit of background, a little over three years ago, I was probably about this size, maybe even tinier because I didn't even know what I was doing, but I knew guilds were a feature. I had an unreasonable fear of joining a guild, mostly because I didn't want to ruin a guild. I didn't know what I was going to contribute. I didn't know what I was doing. I just didn't want to heard it. So I actually made the mistake of staying guildless for several weeks. So hopefully this video encourages somebody to not make that same move that I did and instead join a guild. So either way, um, when I first joined a guild, you will see the feature pop up right here. Until that time, and I'll show you where it unlocks in your tree, this will be kind of grayed out. Once you've unlocked it on the research tree, this becomes blue. And right now I'm in a guild. So the guild members are here, but when it's not, you will press on this and a pop-up window kind of appears in the middle and it'll give you like 10 guild options. Not all of those guild options are good fit guild options. Some of them are very tiny, some of them are inactive, some of them might be really big. So I'm gonna show you a way to find a good fit guild in a little bit as well. But once you press on that, that'll become available. It only shows you 10 though, and I wish Forges of Empire would release like a little kind of search bar option with that. And I'm sorry that I'm already in a guild, so you can't view that, but there is no search bar within that. So that makes it kind of difficult if you are searching for a particular guild. And I will kind of <laughs> go into depth about why. So when I was first, like I said, three-ish years ago when I was a baby, and I finally decided to take the plunge, I joined a guild. It was a very small guild. And at the time that I joined it, the leader had actually said, within two days, we're going to be dissolving and we're going to be joining a different guild. And that guild is called paradise. And here, that is the guild I am still in to this day. Um, but me being a little follower, I was like, I will follow this person to this guild no matter where you go. And I didn't at the time know, which I should say, if you are playing Forge of Empires, it is not just a mobile game. You can also play on the computer. So I didn't know it was a computer website option either. I was just playing mobile. So I didn't know how to search for guilds or anything. And I kid you not, you guys, I spent probably three hours refreshing this guild bar down here for 10 new guilds to come up until Paradise showed up. I was that much of a <laughs> dork. <laughs> <laughs> but I found it and I am still there to this day. So hopefully I also help somebody saving three hours trying to find a particular guild. Huh. <laughs> Anywho, let's go visit our research tree, you guys. So first things up, first, I am in Iron Age, but the guild feature is not here. It's actually in Bronze Age that you need to unlock. I will give an update to my city. It's about two-ish weeks old. I'll make a separate video for that though. So let's pop back into Bronze Age. We're going to count six ladder rungs. One, two, three, four, five. Or oh, I guess it's five. Oh, not six. Lil. Okay, sorry. Five, you guys. <laughs> that was a little creepy. Anyway, you're going to see this feature. It looks the same on mobile unless your app has not updated yet. But right here, it's going to say this technology unlocks guilds. So you can see you have a little bit of work to do to get to this feature. And that's something that I have a little bit of a pet peeve with because guilds are so crucial and they help so much. So to make newbies get all the way to there, they might not even realize how important guilds are. But anywho, so once you get there, though, this only unlocks the guild feature. Before that time, you actually can search for guilds within the ranking, but it, you cannot look at guild descriptions. I will show that. Once you've joined a guild, there are a couple of other things you're going to need to unlock and work towards. 
Next one is an Iron Age. This first feature right here, this great building contribution, you need to unlock this, which will also unlock something called Guild Expedition. If you do not have this unlocked, you cannot do Guild Expedition in your guild. You won't even show up as being able to impact scores, so that is a good thing for at least if you're if um, a guild is you know concerned about bringing on a newbie. If they have, don't have this unlocked yet, they just will act like they haven't, they're haven't. they not a part of the guild yet. So once you've unlocked this, you can use Guild Expedition, but you can also contribute to great buildings as well, which is also a huge part of the game. And then we're going to travel down a little bit more in our tree, and you can see where I'm at. I still have a ways to go before I get to this PvP fights, but if we press on it, you're going to see this green flag, another huge part of the game that was released back in November of 2019 was Guild Battlegrounds. So this is another really fun feature. It's essentially like Guild versus Guild, which is a computer only kind of um, feature like this that they unlocked for both computer and mobile. Um, but you get to fight as a team against other guilds and take over sectors on a map and it's super fun. But I haven't unlocked it yet, so I can't partake in that yet. Um, so be mindful of that, especially when you're looking for a good fit yet. So let's go in and peek. So we're back on our home screen. If you want to research some different guilds, like I said, the, if you have that pop-up window, they'll have those 10 guilds or so that you can look at. Not always all of them are good fits. Here's a secondary way to find a guild that works for you. Go to your rankings. Um, you can find your rankings on your actual picture if you are on mobile. So, oh, where am I? There I am. So um, on mobile, if you were to press your picture, I believe it will pop up um, and it'll show you where you kind of sit ranking wise. That is on the right hand tab. On the left hand tab, you're going to see guilds. And so it kind of matches this. But on mobile, it does not have medals and it does not have great buildings. It just has these two. So before you have on guilds unlocked on that research tree, you can go in here and you can see all these guilds. But if you were to try and press on them, nothing happens. Once you have the guild feature unlocked, you can actually press on them and a pop-up window about the guild will show. So this is a really important feature here. This You can literally search through guilds upon guilds and you can see a little bit of info. So this guild expedition shows you just how they've placed in that feature. The guild battlegrounds will also show you what league they're playing in. It'll have all of the members listed and then it'll also have the guild descri description here. Often guilds will put their minimum requirements within the guild description. So things like Let's see, we're going to find a top guild because I would say, even me being a newbie, even though I'm experienced, I would not be able to handle the requirements of a top guild because A, I haven't unlocked all the features, and B, I'm still trying to grow myself. So I know my friends here won't mind if I pop in and look at their guild really quick. So this is a guild that um, just being where I'm at right now, I can't um, meet. So requirements, uh, before I kind of do, as you're looking at guilds, they're going to have various requirements. Some will want you to aid or motivate um, buildings. So that's by pressing a feature down here, this aid feature. So some might say we want you to aid, you know, three to five times a week. Uh, so that'll be something that you need to do. Others will say within guild expedition, they want you to do so many encounters. So right now, if we're peeking, I have done one, two, three, four, five. I've done five encounters. Some will say we want you to do eight encounters, which would be up to this right here. If somebody wanted you to do 16 encounters, that means they want you to finish all, oops, come on, all of level one, which is all the way to here. So be really mindful. So I've been trying my best, and right now I haven't been using any goods because I actually don't really have any goods. I just dropped a temple of relics. So I am just fighting my way and I'm already like dying three or four people by this one. Granted I am using a lot of Bronze Age and not Iron Age but uh, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> so be mindful of that. Also some will say that they want you to do so many um, encounters in Guild Battlegrounds. That would be right here but as you can see I haven't even unlocked it yet. So 
trying to get into a guild that has those requirements is not a good fit for me at this time because I wouldn't be able to meet them. Um, some other requirements that they might have too is that you either need an arc or an observatory. And let me see, I'm going to show you that via um, here because I've been trying to start. So uh, an observatory looks like this. Um, so as you can see, I don't even have all of the blueprints for it, but some might say, you know, within six weeks time of joining the guild, we want you to have an observatory. They might also only want you to have an arc. And, uh, oh man, maybe I don't even have any. I thought I did. Hmm. Maybe I don't. So interesting. Maybe that person's head isn't leveled yet. That's probably what it is. Um... I'll show you that in my other city when I pop over there real quick, just so that you guys get an idea of what it looks like. Um, some might even say they want you to have a Statue of Honor. That is a building that you get from Guild Battlegrounds. I will also show you that in my other city here in a jiffy. Um, and some might say they want you to be a part of Guild versus Guild, which is a computer only. So if you are not playing on the computer, don't join a guild that has Guild versus Guild requirements. Okay, so... Let's go back in real quick to that guild, just so I can kind of show you guys around, just so that you get an idea. So there's three different ways to join a guild. Um, it looks different on the phone than it does on a computer. On the phone, if a guild is open to accepting people, anybody can come or go, you'll actually see down here an option that says join guild. That means you can just pop in without talking to anybody. Now, let's say the guild is an apply only guild or an invite only guild. That means, so let's kind of peek and see if they have names. So you're gonna wanna look. Okay, so look at the bottom here. It says, ask any questions or contact these people. You will find those people in the members. So you're gonna wanna go in, you're gonna find the person and that'll be the person and you should be able to send them a message. So you can say, you know, hey, I looked at your requirements. I'm interested in joining your guild. Um, let me know what you um, are offering or let me know what you think, kind of something like that. Create a little message. So that is if you can't just join the guild. Um, some are open, some are closed. So this one is probably a apply or invite only if they want you to contact somebody. Um, but what you'll notice, a lot of guilds will ask you to be active. They'll talk about how they trade goods and the system that they use. This one, for instance, wants you to have an arc. Um, this one wants you to finish up to level three. So within Guild Expedition, there are three levels. So 16 encounters is just that level one. At this time, I absolutely cannot make it to level three where I'm at. Um, so just be kind of mindful of that as you're looking. I would say if you are a newbie starting off, Look for a guild that has aiding as a requirement and motivating because you can do that every single day. And like I said, that's this feature down here. You would just aid the person. Um, I would say if you did, you could find a guild expedition that has maybe an encounters done as four or eight. You should be able to get to eight, um, but four for sure. Uh, try to stray away from somebody that really wants to have guild battlegrounds because it's going to take you some time to unlock it unless they are you know willing to give you some time let them know you don't have it unlocked but that is a feature that you want to get to if you don't have an arc or an observatory make that you your number one priority to get that in your city if it is a requirement because they will want that um let's see i'm just quick peeking here um, also, somebody had asked me via a PM message, once you're in a guild, like they had said they were in a guild that wasn't super active and they wanted to find one that was more active, how do you leave the guild that you're in? So on computer, it looks different than on mobile, but on mobile, you're going to see this three line here. You're going to press that and it's actually just going to have a red option that says leave guild. So you'll be able to press that there. That's for mobile. On computer, you actually have to go to the members. And then you have to find yourself. It's very tedious, I say. And then this red option here is allows you to leave the guild. Um, so be mindful of that. When you do look at guilds, you can also see what level everybody is on too. So that's really helpful um, when you're figuring out 
skills. Let's see. I talked about how to leave. I'm just looking at my notes, you guys. How to find. I showed you that. Um, when you're finding guilds, I would say stick to like the top maybe one to 300-ish um, rankings, not pages. Um, and just go in and kind of see where you're at. I mean, the ones that are a little bit lower, you're going to be able to find recommend uh, requirements that are a little bit more easy to meet than say like the top five guilds or top 10, things like that. So be kind of mindful of that. Go for some of the ones just kind of peek in. It doesn't harm. Like I said, once you have the guild feature unlocked, you can go in, you can read all of the descriptions and just pop through. So it's kind of fun to see what everybody has as well. Um, and you can kind of get the feel for the guilds when you're reading them. Okay, let me see you guys. Hmm. Oh, so once you've joined a guild, I wanted to show you this. On computer, you can go to these three heads here and then there's your guild and your guild description will pop up. Now on computer, you're gonna see this tab of guild and actually this right here has that information. You'll see your guild name and if you were to press on it, that same pop-up window would show up there. Once you're actually in a guild, do not be afraid to ask questions. Most guilds have a Q&A feature, a chat feature where you can ask questions, learn, do not be afraid. This is your chance to learn as much as you can. Um, people are so awesome in Forge of Empires. I am, I just mean, I am so, it's really a fun community to, part, to be a part of. Okay, so I think that's everything that I wanted to talk. Let's pop over to my guild really quick over in B, just so I can show you guys, like I said, what some of those buildings look like they might want you to build. Thank you guys for being so patient. It's almost done. I promise. Okay, so like I said, that Statue of Honor building, which is from Guild, oh, and I can actually show you what it looks like, from Guild Battlegrounds. This is when it's become unlocked. This is what it'll look like. So this is where you will get that building. They might have a requirement that they want you to build that within, you know, a couple of weeks time. Normally there's that built-in period to give you a chance to actually do a couple of rounds in order to build it so it's not like you need to have it already. Um, they won't, hopefully a guild isn't like that. There probably are some but they're the very serious fighters out there. Um, so then I said an arc they might want you to build. That is this one right here. So an arc gives um, it gives the goods to the treasury, Ooh, which I should talk about the treasury, but that's okay. We'll go into that another time. I don't want to get this too overwhelming for somebody brand new. Then there's also the observatory. This is this small little guy. He also gives some goods to the treasury, but also helps with some of the gain. Um, like it, it shows you the guild gains support pool. That's specifically for guild versus guild feature. And then the atomium. I don't have that one built. Let's see. Oh, Lil. Come on, girl. There it is. Nope. There it is. Here it is. Atomium. This is also, uh, gives you happiness, but you can see it gives the guild six goods an hour. Or pff, a, a day. Oh my goodness, an hour. Hmm, boy, treasuries would look nice, right, you guys? <laughs> okay, so let's just do a couple of, hopefully this isn't too messy. When you join a guild, you will automatically, this first bar up here will be the guild kind of chat um, option. Every guild uses it differently. Our, this for our guild is just the main announcements and the personal chat goofball land there. As you can see, I, somebody said something funny and it could have been me right before that. I don't know. Um, then there's also... Um, so there's going to be different swap threads. Uh, we make an event thread for events that come up with the quests. Not all guilds do that. That's just something that we do. Let's talk, you're going to see um, maybe some guilds will have, oh, and this is a nice feature if you find a guild that has either a 1.85 or a 1.9 leveling thread. That is something that is awesome and in my opinion, very, very helpful. But so then there's also swaps. So swaps are essentially you're going to see a bunch of names. But this person here posts their great building, then this person posts, and they're going to put 100 forge points on their building. Then this next person posts, and they're putting 100 forge points on their building. And now he's waiting for somebody to post, and they'll put 100 forge points on his. So there'll be various swap threads. That's for those great buildings. Like I said, you need to unlock at the beginning of Iron Age. Um, I'm just kind of going through to see 
what we've got. Oh, there's going to, a lot of guilds will have a goods trade um, where you post a trade and then people will pick it up. Um, guilds will have um, often leveling news. So if there's a great building that's about to level, you can pick up a spot there for relatively cheap. Um, a lot of them will have a battlegrounds thread or more potentially um, and it'll there that's for this feature over here I'm just kind of popping through to see what we all have you guys to see if there's anything that I'm missing some will have some arc groups as well uh, we have a birthday one in my guild so we celebrate birthdays we have a speed leveling so that's for people that want to move really fast um, do like five or six levels within you know less than an hour kind of thing. There's We have a Q&A specifically as well for just asking questions, learning. Um, oh, there's our birthday club. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that kind of gives an idea of just some of the features that we have within our guild. Um, oh, but fair trade versus traditional trade. I wanted to talk about that really quick. In this Forges of Empire tool, some guilds may say that they go by specific trading tools. So let's look at the trades real fast. So in this, this is also where you can find great buildings. There's either a fair trade or a 2.1. So a 2 to 1 is the traditional um, version. So some guilds, will you'll actually see that they are a fair trade guild. That's what we are. So we use this side of the calculator. If you are not and they want 2 to 1 or 1 to 1, that's within ERA. This is helpful for that. So that's this tool up here, FOE Tools. Um, but I think hopefully that covers everything. What does our guild look like real quick for... If there's anything that I missed, uh, there's a lot more features here. Uh, but like I said, the treasury has what is in the treasury for the guild. If you are in a bronze age, no goods at all are used in it. So, and that's for any of the features. You need treasury goods to unlock guild expedition, unlock features in uh, guild versus guild, and also, oh, I should show that, and guild uh, battlegrounds. But so, when you have an observatory, an arc, or an atomium, the goods go there that is needed. But let's talk about, I'm not going to go super in-depth on this because I am not an expert on this, I will say. There are many others that are, um, but this is guild versus guild. So you see all these little red dots, those are taken by t people, and this is essentially like guild battlegrounds, but you're fighting in sectors and it's more long-term on here. So they might want you to be to if you're joining a guild to partake in this uh, feature, but it's a computer only you guys. So that's also the guild versus guild. But hopefully that's helpful you guys. Guilds are fantastic. They are where I can officially say I have friendships of three plus years. They are the people that I have so much fun joking around with. They are people um, that it's without them the game would just not be what it is. So Hopefully this is helpful. Join a guild, you guys. Okay, bye!